Hey, I'm Chris Murphy with another walk around video. Today I'm with a Mahindra 2638. Yet again, let me remind you what a walk around video is. This is not a sales pitch. This is to let people that have already bought this tractor, or any of these other models we've already shot, um, just a little reminder, just a little refresher course. Um, instead of calling and saying it won't, the, the thingy's broke, or I've got this thingy light on there, I need to kind of have some of the same terminology as what, what we've got there. Now don't forget, I've failed to mention that in some of the other videos, don't forget your operator's manual is one of, you, one of your best things, best references you've got, but you can always call us. We'll try to walk through it. It's hard to give a haircut over the telephone, but we will do our best to try to help you. Okay, this is the 2638, 38 horsepower, four cylinder Mahindra diesel engine, Mahindra common rail diesel, no regen, no def, nothing like that. Like this tractor out here a lot. It's got a little bit, little bit larger rubber than the 1635 and the 1640, uh, but basically the same physical size tractor as the 1640, about the same weight, just different strokes for different folks. So if you like this one better, jump on it. If you like 1640 better, jump on it. The thing to do, if you not, can't quite make sure, here's the sales pitch. I'll sell you both of them. All right, let's get back on the walk around. All right, on your bucket, your bucket is skid steer coupled very simply pull those handles up roll out of the bucket into another attachment scoop it up curl it back and push the handle back down you want to make sure that you're getting a positive lock on your pin you may not be able to see it from standing where i am you might have to raise it up and look at it but you definitely want to spend a little time looking to make sure that that attachment is locked on to that quick coupler yet again all of these tractors all these mahindras all the ls's that we sell these tractors um, are universal skid steer coupled. You don't have to go and buy something special to fit this tractor. If it's a universal skid steer, it will couple up. I see a lot of questions on Facebook and forums and that kind of stuff. Hey, will my tractor run a universal skid steer hydraulic mulcher like you'd have on a skid steer? Well, it will couple up. Those things are heavier than what people understand. It may not carry it, but like I say, hydraulically a tractor doesn't have what it takes to do big attachments like that like a drum motor that's going to be you know 35 36 gallons a minute minimum most of the most small tractors like this are going to be 9 10 not a whole lot a big tractor probably or i say a big tractor 100 horse tractor probably not going to be any more than 17 to 20 21 so Tractors just don't have what a skid steer has got as far as hydraulic flow for some of those attachments. Now that being said, not saying a skid steer is better. I like a skid steer, but a tractor's got its place. A tractor's a lot less money than a skid steer too. So, on to the loader. You do have grease fittings on every pin on the loader. The loader itself is removable, very simple. All the hoses over there are color matched, so you, when you go back to it, you're gonna hit the the blue to the blue, the green to the green, the yellow to the yellow, white to white, red to red, whatever it is. So you just very simply hook that back up. So talked about the loader. While we're talking about the loader, this is where your front loader mount starts. And it comes all the way back here. It's also tied underneath the toolbox right here, all the way back to the rear axle. Very heavy loader frame on these tractors. Very heavy front axle. Very heavy front bolster, what the axle is mounted on. You've actually got a grease fitting on the front trunnion and on the rear trunnion. Now, I believe the grease fitting on the rear trunnion, yes, it's on the other side of the tractor, but both the front and the rear trunnion where the axle pivots, it actually has a grease fitting there. And I really like that and appreciate a manufacturer doing that because it's still a moving part, just like these, just like these, point, these joints on the uh, loader. That axle's constantly doing that. Steel on steel wears out. That's why you pump grease in there, you pump the dirt out, give it something to lubricate. Should last longer. Greasing, people ask all the time, how often should you grease it? You can keep up with 10 on the hour meter. Every 10 hours on the meter, you at least should grease it. Nothing wrong with greasing it more than that. But you can keep up with 10 on the meter pretty easily. Okay. The tie rod ends are sealed, so you don't have to worry about those. Um, I think we're ready to move the hitch. On the rear of this tractor here, 
Of course, it does come with a top length and draw bar. This is your hitch arms. It does have turnbuckle stabilizers. Some tractors come with turnbuckles. Some tractors come with telescoping. Uh, you got different, different trains of thought there. Some people really love the turnbuckles much better. Some people love the, the uh, telescoping. I'm more of a telescoping guy. Uh, but the guys that tear up the uh, telescoping think these are better. The guys that tear these up think the telescoping is better. So what tears up a stabilizer? A stabilizer is strong on this one right here, pulling against itself. I can't push it that far. Now, if this one doesn't catch here, catch, catch right there where it can't let that attachment go any further before this one pushes in and binds up. Now, granted, that's one thing about a turnbuckle I really do like. You've got the chain link or the clevis at that end, so you do have a lot more free motion there. So, but if that's bound up, that's where you're going to bend the stabilizer. It wasn't the one that, it's, it's the, the other side that caused the side to break. Got me? Now, we've talked about SMVs. Use these. Dusky dark people will see their headlights reflecting on that before they'll see your tail lights. If this is impeding your view, it does slide in and out. Uh, I've got one or two tractors mounted right on the back of the seat. Well, that's not obstructing your view. This one's a little further back because you got a fuel tank right here. You're going to fill it up right here. Very easy spot to get to. You do have a screen here in the tank. Buy your fuel where there's a lot of fuel. Put it in a good, clean, designated container. Use that strainer. We find shop towels, acorns, fishing floats, and molding material out of gas jugs in tanks all the time. Showed on the last video where we sucked out some uh, gasoline out of the last guy's tank. Gasoline is still going to go through the strainer, but make sure you know what's in the jug you're getting. Don't just grab the first five gallon bucket that's in the barn because it could have a rat nest in it. Pour that in there, you got a rat nest in your tank, you got to fish it out. So, three point hitch back here. This is where you would add your hydraulic fluid. That's going to run your rear end, rear axle housings, transmission, tra you know, that's on the hydrostat. This is where you would add it, but you need to see how much is in it. Let you load her down, put the tractor on flat level ground. You've got a sight glass right here. It's got a red dot in it. When the fluid's up, that's when you'll see it there. Now, if the loader is up or the bucket is curled all the way under, it may not read correctly because you've got fluid in those cylinders. So as you let it down, if you filled it up with a loader up and you let it down, now you're going to be over full and you're probably going to spit it out the breather because it is going to self bleed. So don't panic if you do, it's going to level itself off. Your draw bar does have an anti rattle here. That's tight. You can see I can't move it, not getting any racket. So you'd loosen this up. You got a pin there, pull it out. You do have a cover on the PTO back here. Some people really like that. A lot, if you don't have one of those, or if you lose it, smear a little grease on it when you go by. Okay, let's get on to the operator's platform. Yet again, I want to brag on Mahindra's seat. You do have armrest here. This is actually a suspension seat. It does uh, go back and forth with this right here. You do have a cup holder, a little 12 volt outlet, place to charge your cell phone. Seat belt is retractable. I really like that so you don't have it dangling down behind the seat. Another thing I like about these tractors, and most of our tractors are this way, you got this platform that the seat is on, so you're not you not have a bunch of stuff dropping down underneath the tractor or dangling like a seat belt, that kind of thing. Here is for your transmission range. You got low, neutral, medium, and high. So you shift this with the tractor stop, foot off the pedal, foot on the brake. This is not a clutch. This is a brake. So when you shift this, you're stopped. Engine can be running, should be running. Foot on the brake. You can come back to neutral, come back to medium, come back to low. Now that say it bound up and didn't want to shift, okay? Release the brake, see if it rolls a little bit, hold a little pressure, and it'll probably shift. If it doesn't roll a little bit, just give it just a little pedal on the go or reverse, and like I say, hold a little pressure, it'll fall into gear, okay? 
Your differential lock is normally on this side, but it's moved over to here, so you can keep your right foot on the pedal. You can use your left foot to push this down. Yet again, to take that out, you may have to change direction, forward to reverse, or separate your brakes and use one brake or the other. Back on this side, you've got your three-point hitch. Your three-point hitch, as you pull it up, your three-point's gonna go up. You see that? As you push down, it's gonna go down. Now, this is your drop speed control. So with this unscrewed all the way, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, all the way loose, the heavier the implement, the faster you push this lever, the faster it's going to drop. As you screw this in, this will start to drop slower. Be very careful though, if you've got your hitch all the way up, or it's down and you raise it up, and this is turned all the way in, it'll go up and won't come down. So be careful if you've got it just barely open and it's really looking good, just easing on the ground. Everybody's looking, man, look what operator. But you get off and you drag your foot across and now it went to lock. I get this question a lot. So if it ever goes to lock, you've got a heavy implement and it's up in the air, make sure and crank the tractor back up, pull the lever all the way back to the raised position, hopefully taking the pressure off, then open this back up, okay? Now, Back on this side, we do have four-wheel drive. Down is off, up is on. You've got a PTO in and out of gear, okay? With the PTO out of gear, it doesn't matter if you push the PTO switch or not. Got a switch right here. If you can push that switch all day long, if that's out of gear, the PTO's not gonna turn. So you'll have to put the tractor, yeah, forward is off. Now with that off, you can turn the PTO shaft in the back of the tractor. It makes it much easier hooking up drive lines. But once it's hooked up, Put that on, still not turning until you hit the switch. When you hit the switch, it does light up red. That means the PTO is turning and it's active. You do have another switch right here. I'm not sure if you can shoot it from where you are. Right here. This is for the PTO as well. This does not turn it off and on. It just decides what mode it's in. You've got manual, off, and auto. So if you've got it off, you maybe you're teaching your child to operate the tractor, that kind of thing, and you don't want them up here pushing buttons and turning the cutter on and hurting somebody. Leave it in off. When you've got this arrow pointing toward manual, when you, if it had a clutch and you mash the clutch, this one does not have a clutch, but on tractors it's got this option. If you mash the clutch, the PTO would stop. If you raise your three-point hitch, the PTO would stop. Can't think of many reasons that that would be necessary, maybe a post hole auger, that kind of thing. Most of the time, 99% of the time, you're gonna run this in auto. Nothing wrong with leaving this in, in any mode that you want, but like I say, before the tractor will crank, this PTO switch has got to be off. I think the PTO over there has got to be in off as well. Um, but just safety stuff, okay? You do have a hand throttle here, right here. To me, this is a little bit backwards. I'm used to pushing away from me to raise the throttle. You pull this down to give it more throttle. This right here is a park brake set, so you can mash your foot on the brake, pull this handle down, pull this handle down with the brake mashed. As you're holding this, release the brake, it's gonna hold it down. To release the lock, mash the brake down, and this is gonna release. Of course, you do have tilt wheel right here. Light controls, hazard controls, um, very simple to operate. Now this tractor does have an engine heater. See your glow plug indicator. It may not necessarily be glow plugs, but it is going to be some sort of air intake heater or glow plug. Got some very simple lights on this as far as warning, check engine, that kind of thing. Of course, call your dealer if you have a check engine light. You do have water in the fuel um, light does have a float in those fuel filters to let you know it's got water in the fuel. Don't always trust the light to tell you when, uh, when there's water in the fuel. If it acts like water's in the fuel, 99% chance you probably got water in the fuel. So drain those fuel filters. I'm gonna show those to you in a minute when we raise the hood. Very simple analog tack, I really like that. You got analog uh, fuel gauge and coolant gauge. Your hour meter's easy to see. Let's talk about what we're talking about the tack. 
See right here, about 2400 RPM. It's got a little symbol that says 540. A lot of people don't understand what that means. What that means is the engine has to be running at 2400 and when the PTO is on, that's turning 540 RPMs back there. Well, your cutter is designed to cut at 540 RPMs. If it's got a shear bolt, that shear bolt is designed to slip or, or shear at 540 RPMs or greater. If it's got a slip clutch, most all our cutters have slip clutches, it's designed to slip at 540 RPM. If you're down here running at 1500, really quote unquote taking care of your tractor, pardon me, a lot of people buy a new tractor and they say, I'm not going to run mine at any RPM, I'm going to take care of it so it lasts forever. Well, number one, you're killing it. RPMs are your friend on the tractor. It's going to cool better, it's going to run, it's going to operate better. Your hydraulic pump is providing the flow that you need for your transmission much better and for your hydraulics on the rear and the front. RPM, RPM, RPM. Run those RPMs. I always tell people you're better off running full throttle. That's not enough. So that's what that 540 means. You need to be running at least 2400 on this model to have 540 at the back. Again, you can run faster than that, but you don't want to run less. Okay, I'm going to raise this loader up and get it scotched up so we can get under and I'm going to show you how to raise the, uh, raise the hood and that kind of thing to get in there to service. All right, we've got the loader raised up. I've got the joystick locked out with the lock out there. I always put a piece of angle iron between here and here. That way if it did fall, that would be something to stop it other than my head. So like I say, got some safety measures going on there. To raise the hood on the 2638, you got this little handle and it's just connected to a bolt, just welded to a bolt. You're gonna loosen that up a couple of rounds. You're gonna loosen this one up a couple of rounds on this side. And this is a new tractor. Once you get this worn in, it's not as tough, but you're gonna pull this forward. That way the hood doesn't come into contact with it when you raise it. You've got a little handle right here, a little latch. Push down, that's how the hood raises it, raise itself. If it doesn't, sometimes the plastic right here on the grill will stick to the rubber. Um, so you may have to give it a little, a little help with your hand. But like I say, you can see it's got a strut to hold it up. But Chris, I still got these side panels to deal with. Well, the nice thing about this tractor, your engine oil dipstick is actually underneath the side panel. So you can get to that. When I go to run my tractor, I'm going to check the engine oil. I'm going to check the radiator cap. I'm going to pull the radiator cap because the tractor has not been running yet. I'm going to check it at the cap. Now this tractor does have an overflow jug. A lot of people trust those. I'm not one that does, so I always check at the cap when it's cold. I'm going to check my air filter, make sure we're not restricted. I'm going to look at my radiator, make sure it's not stopped up. So there's really none of that that you can't do with the side panels on. But, say you need to change that fuel filter. Very simple. You're going to pull up this way and then out towards you. You've got these pegs right here. They slide into some rubber grommets back of there at the firewall. While we're talking about side panels, be very careful where you lay them and don't run over them. That kind of thing. You need those side panels on there for the airflow, the restriction, or not restriction, but keeping the grass and stuff from getting up in there as much. But that has a lot to do with how your air flows and how the fan pulls where it pulls from. Uh, you don't want, probably don't want to run these without the side panels on. I don't recommend it anyway. Okay. Engine oil dipstick, like we said, is here and you do not have to pull the side panel. Engine oil fill, right here, easy to get to. This has got a fuel filter here with a primer pump and it's got a drain on the bottom. Okay. You do have a secondary fuel filter on the other side that we'll show you in just a minute. Engine oil filters on the other side. The screen, you do have a metal screen here in front of the radiator so you can pull that out and clean that out in the field. Don't forget, you may have to wipe the grill off because you may have a dandelions and sage grass and everything else stuck up here. And it's not, if it's not letting it through here, it's not gonna cool here. Your battery is easily accessible right there if you ever did want to jump something off or jump it off. You go from there. Mm. Now I'm seeing something I think we talked about earlier, but I want to make sure everybody knows the front trunnion and the rear trunnion do have grease fittings. There's a grease fitting there. 
The grease fitting on the rear trunnion is actually on the other side. You access it from the other side of the tractor, but both those trunnions grease with axle pivots. While we're talking about the front axle, right here is where you're gonna check your front differential fluid, which is just gear lube. You can see on this side how long that loader frame is. I think we may have already talked about that earlier, but you got a heavy front frame here. This is your engine oil filter, and this filter here is your secondary fuel filter. And this side panel comes off the same way. So it's very easy access. And again, secondary fuel filter and also your engine oil filter. And again, that's a catalytic converter. There, this tractor does not do any kind of regen. It does not take any kind of added fluid, no def fluid, no diesel particulate filter. Mahindra spent a lot of money to, to get that to happen and I do like that engine. So I'm Chris Murphy with Murphy Brothers. This has been the 2638 walk around. Uh, if you've got any questions, you've already got this tractor or if you're just watching this, trying to learn about a tractor, don't hesitate to call us. Chris Murphy at Murphy Brothers, 662-720-0022. We're right here in northeast Mississippi in Boonville, Mississippi. So come see us.